Assalamu alaikum. I'm Professor Dr. Haider Jawad Mubarak. This is a presentation to comparative anatomy of the skeletal system. This presentation is uh, including uh, comparative anatomy of the appendicular skeletal system, not the axial skeletal skeletal uh, system. Generally, the appendicular skeleton is formed of pectoral girdle, or called shoulder girdle, and pelvic girdle, and also the appendicular skeleton system include the limbs, which are the appendages, or called the fins in fish. Starting with the pectoral girdle. The pectoral girdle is also called shoulder girdle. It suspends the forelimb or the upper limb, or called anterior appendages. In primitive bony fish, this pectoral girdle is formed of three bones, which are coracoid, scapula, and suprascapular bone. And these bones are well demonstrated here. This is the coracoid in bony fish, primitive bony fish. This is the suprascapular bone, and this is the scapular bone. In some other bony fish, we may have other group or series of bones that are called dermal bones, in addition to these three bones of the pectoral girdle. The dermal bones include the clavicle, the clethrum, supraclethrum, and posttemporal bone, and these dermal bones are demonstrated here. This is the clavicle, clethrum, supraclethrum, posttemporal bone, and also here. You can see these are the dermal series of bone that are present in some of the bony fish in addition to the bones of the pectoral girdle or shoulder girdle. Uh, the more developed bony fish shows less number and smaller size of uh, bones in the pectoral girdle. And uh, in tetrapod also the uh, number of the uh, bones is reduced, especially the dermal bones, not the real bones of the pectoral girdle. Regarding the pelvic girdle, the pelvic girdle, of course, it supports the lower limb or called the hind limb or called the posterior appendages. Bones of the pectoral of the pelvic girdle include uh, ischial bar, pubic bar, and sometimes iliar bar also. And uh, there is no dermal bones in the uh, pelvic girdle, just like the pectoral girdle. The pectoral girdle contains three bones in addition to some series of dermal bones. Here the pelvic girdle does not contain any dermal bone. So uh, the pelvic girdle in fish uh, are, is formed of ischial bar, pubic bar, in addition to uh, some uh, fish contain ileal bar. And uh, these uh, pieces of uh, pelvic girdle are uh, in tetrapod cartilaginous at early embryonic life, but they will ossify later on. And uh, tetrapods always having ileum, not like the primitive fish that may or may not have an ileum. Tetrapods must have an ileum. Examples for uh, comparative anatomy of the pelvic girdle will include the following. First, the frog. You can see that the ileum as a frog is formed of an elongated bone that articulates with the sacral vertebrae and the joint of the sacrum with the ileum, sacroiliac joint, is a very movable joint that helps in jumping of the uh, frog, very help, helpful in jumping, the movable, freely movable sacroiliac joint. And also in frog you can see this is the pubis bone and this is the ischium bone. Uh, other example of the uh, pelvic girdle is in fish. You can see that in fish, the ileum and ischium are a very large bones. They are expanded bones, and uh, these large bones articulate not only with the sacral vertebrae, as in uh, frog, but the ileum and sacrum also. Is, uh, because they are large, they articulate with the sacral and also lumbar vertebrae. But in birds, the pubis bone is formed of a slender, thin piece of bone with the uh, limitation of the pubic symphysis or absence of the pubic symphysis. And uh, the reason behind that configuration is that the large ilium and ischium uh, provides uh, adaptation for attachment uh, of strong muscles that support the 
uh, hind limb and thus allowing the bird to walk on the hind limb. You know, the bird looks, uh, walks and moves on the hind limbs. It's bipedal. And therefore, uh, the bipedal locomotion of the bird needs strong muscles to support the bi bipedal locomotion. And these strong muscles, therefore, are attached to a large ilium and large ischium. The enlargement of the ischium and ilium uh, is an accommodation to, uh, for the attachment of muscles uh, supporting the bipedal locomotion. And th the reason behind the small pubis, the thin slender pubis with poor symphysis pubis, is that the exit of the egg out of the bird is uh, via the outlet at the pubis. Because, you know, here at the ilium and ischium, uh, ilium and ischium are very large and will not allow the passage of the egg out of the bird. So the pubics and the pubic uh, deficit pubic symphysis, the pubis is thin and deficit pubic symphysis to allow outlet of the egg uh, uh, from the pubic region. This is another example of the pelvic outlet of the pelvic uh, girdle. Uh, one in the bird and the other in the frog. In mammals, the bony pelvis here is of a human, and this is the bony pelvis of the uh, cat and examples of mammals. You can see that uh, the three bones of the bony pelvis, of the pelvic girdle, I mean, uh, the pubis, the ischium, and the uh, ilium are articulating with each other, and this piece is called the hip bone or called innominate bone. You have right and left hip bones that articulate with the sacrum. Here, the sacrum is formed by fusion of sacral vertebrae. And also, in, in uh, cat, we can see in this mammal, the cat, the ilium, and the ischium, and the pubis are uniting to form a hip bone, which is the innominate bone. That's all about the pectoral girdle and the pelvic girdle, and now we will describe the limbs. Generally, the limbs have four segments, whether forelimb or hind limb. Starting with the forelimb, or called anterior limb, or anterior appendages, or called upper limb, the five parts include, uh, as it is shown in the figure of a human and uh, a cat, uh, the five parts of the forelimb are the arm or called the brachium, upper arm or brachium that contains the humerus bone uh, and also here we have an arm with the humerus in cat. The forearm which is called antibrachium containing the radius and ulna bone and also these are seen in the forearm of cat. And third part is the carpal or are the carpal bones which are bones of the wrist. Uh, and uh, also they are seen into the uh, skeleton of the cut and next to the carpals are the metacarpals and then the phalanges or the digits. While the five parts of the lower limb include in cut and in human the thigh which is uh, containing the femur bone, the leg or called the crass which is containing the uh, tibia and fibula, sometimes they are called the shank, and uh, in addition to them, or uh, the third part is the tarsal bone, and next to the tarsal bones are the metatarsal bones, the tarsal bones are bones of the ankle, metatarsal bones are called the uh, insteps, uh, and then the phalanges of the digits. Uh, Bones of the hind limb, therefore, uh, are uh, formed in the same configuration as in the forelimb, with an exception. The exception is that the hind limb also contains a patella in some vertebrates, which is the uh, knee cup called. Such uh, an exception is found in bird, you can see. Uh, this bird containing a patella and also a mammal, for example, in a human or the uh, uh, varala, you can see the patella. Some vertebrates do not have any appendages, do not have any limbs, as the snake. Other vertebrates may have only a forelimb, there is no hind limb. 
as this skeleton of uh, dolphin. And uh, tetrapods and lower tetrapods as this alligator, uh, you can see that the first part of the limb, which is the brachium or the arm, project straight out of the body so that there is a, a right angle between the arm and the uh, axis of the vertebra. This feature is not seen in birds and in mammals. In birds and in mammals, the first part, which is the arm uh, and, uh, and, and the forelimb and the femur and the hind limb, uh, the first part of the hind limb and the first part of the uh, forelimb, which are the thigh and the arm, are ro rotated so that the long axis of the arm or the thigh is nearly parallel to the vertebra not like in this lower vertebrae, the alligator. Here, the arm and the thigh are projecting with the axis of the arm or the thigh is at a right angle to the vertebra. In birds and mammals, the axis of the uh, arm and thigh is rotated so that it will be the long axis of the arm and thigh will be nearly parallel to that axis of the vertebral column. There are some adaptations that could be seen in the hand, which is called the manas. For example, there are adaptations for flight. In bird, uh, adaptations in the hand or the manas, that is adaptation for flight, is uh, loss of some digital bones and also fusion of the bones of the hand. In bat, uh, the adaptation for flight is that elongation of the metacarpal bones and the phalanges bone to support the uh, patagium. Other adaptation in the hand is for swimming as that's seen in the skeleton of the dolphin. You can see that the hand in the dolphin shows adaptation for swimming represented by a large number and size of the phalanges which are bones of the fingers in the hand. Adaptations in vertebrates uh, walking on uh, ground, the terrestrial locomotion uh, vertebrates, is uh, in three form, plantigrade, digitigrade, and anguligrade. In a plantigrade, the uh, hand or the foot is flat, where all the bones of the pis or manas are on the floor. While in digitigrade, the first digit is reduced or absent, and uh, the manas and the uh, pes or pes are elevated in, uh, on the digits. And uh, this example, the digitigrade is seen in dog, while the plantigrade is, is uh, exemplified by the squirrel. The anguligrade, which is represented in horse and in deer, here uh, there, is due, there is a reduction in the number of the digits in instead of five digits you may find two digits, for example, and uh, here the clouds are replaced by hooves. The other type of adaptation, which is the fourth type of adaptation, is for grasping, which is an adaptation seen in humans. Such an adaptation needs uh, opposable thumb. The thumb for uh, grasping uh, ad modification needs to have the ability to be opposed. Opposition meaning that the plantar or palmar surface of the thumb could be, could touch the palmar surface of other digits. Uh, such an adaptation also needs saddle joint between the base of the thumb and the palm and needs a wider angle between the thumb and the index finger and needs a strong muscles of the thumb. This is most of the uh, uh, topic of uh, related to um, comparative anatomy of the appendicular skeletal system. Thank you very much.